Welcome to The Selling Show, where we unpack, repack, and break down exactly how top experts sell their ideas, their value, and their services. This is your host, David Newman, and you are in the right place if you want better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees. You know, it took me a long, long time to get our next guest. You've heard of Van Morrison. Well, we have his little brother, Brian Morrison. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm pretty sure there's no relation. But Brian will tell us from Proxy.com. Brian Morrison, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Newman. It's a pleasure to be here. And is there any relationship between Van Morrison and your family? I'm just not going to comment on it. Let's assume that there is. How about that? Him, John Wayne, you know, because that's actually Marion Morrison. So let's just assume somewhere. All the glamour connections are there. (laughs) Well, you have had, from what I can tell on LinkedIn, even if half of that is true, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you've had an amazing, fantastic career. Could you share with us a little bit about just the professional journey that brought you to the work that you're doing today and what were some interesting stops along the way? Absolutely. It is kind of funny. It may look like I've done a lot of different things, but it's kind of interesting. It all comes back to the career advice I actually got from my father. In the very, very beginning, he said, you know, you can go out and be an expert at one thing, but that's pretty easy for other people to be experts at too. If you find a few things that you really love and you understand the interplay between those things, you can become something pretty special. And so for me, those three things have always kind of revolved around marketing, which to me, marketing is selling, technology, which really means innovation, and design, which really just means finding an elegant solution. So marketing, technology, and design has been the core of everything I've done. That started out with me as a serial entrepreneur, literally started with touchscreen kiosks and hotels back in the day, (laughs) way before the technology allowed for it, and then starting an internet development firm. And that was really a a huge part. And we started that in 1995. Mm. And, you know, that's when we were talking to people about Gopher, you know, and, and, you know, the World Wide Web hadn't quite hit. And so it was a really fascinating time. And it just allowed a young man to be able to say, I think I have a different way of doing this. And so I was just really blessed to be able to come up in that time. And then after that, another big pivotal part of my career was I went to Omnicom and started working, leading agencies, doing turnarounds, running digital for the largest engagement agency in the country. And it was just an incredible opportunity going through that process. You know, I learned systems. I learned Fortune 2000 companies, what they had. But I was always a fan of the small to medium-sized business. Like, that's what I care about. I'm a builder. And I like to see things from ground up. And so that was really one of those things. I'd look at all these top experts that I would be dealing with, these amazing executives. And then I started recognizing like what makes them different. And some of it, of course, is just them. They're just great. But other things that I noticed were the support systems around them. And strategic support was one of those things that as an executive coming up, I always kept thinking to myself, how do you get it? Who can you trust? Where can I find it? And so that was really after I got out of Omnicom, went to a SaaS software firm and ran that. And I just started applying technology against some of those challenges. And then we just deconstructed the strategic support model in a way that we feel like we built a better mousetrap and proxy for small to medium-sized business executives. And tell us what proxy is, because I think it's a really, really fascinating business model. And we'll, we'll, I've got a million questions, but give it to us in kind of starting at square zero terms. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what we do. We clone executives like you. We clone amazing individuals. And what we mean by that is basically we apply really exceptional generalists that can be by your side, can help you scale your concepts and actually operationalize your vision. 
And so we do that with people, process, and technologies. But yeah, it's a it's a very different model than anything we've seen in the marketplace. And we feel like it's a, a better solution. So on the homepage, and we'll of course give the website and all the other goodies, there's calculators and all kinds of things. But you talk about the executive multiplier. Tell us about this concept of the executive multiplier and how that came to be kind of a a really sticky moniker. You know, like I was talking about in the Fortune 500 world, I started seeing and identifying this role of chief of staff. And it was really this person who was incredibly focused on how to help that executive achieve everything that they want. And it was a very misunderstood role as well at times. You know, some people thought, oh, that's kind of an administrative role. But really, it's one of the most strategic roles in an organization. So I just started looking at that and the idea of having somebody who can multiply my effectiveness is really just, that was the underpinning. How could we really give somebody more capacity and also fill in the blanks, right? I mean, every individual, every human being, if they're honest with themselves, has a blind spot. Who can you trust to be honest with you and to be able to talk to you about those blind spots and fill in those blanks? And so That's really what the whole idea of an executive multiplier, we just deconstructed this concept of a chief of staff, which is usually something that's very expensive, very hard to find the perfect person. The model is kind of broken because that person becomes an island. They don't really have staff. They don't, you know, so it it gets completely misunderstood. And we just deconstructed that and turned it into something that small to medium sized businesses can afford. And frankly, they need it more than anybody else because they have time constraints. They don't have access to data and best practices at the same level. They certainly can't afford to make bad hires and have to do that on a repeated basis. And they just know they're more valuable if they have more time to focus. So we're going to talk about, I know that there's different levels of service as far as depth and duration and detail. You've got behind the scenes, side by side, on your behalf place and replace. But even before we get to that, based on what I've heard so far, I'm just channeling our listeners. Some of them are asking, okay, so Brian, are we talking about a virtual assistant? Are we talking about an operations manager? Are we talking about a COO? Are we talking about an integrator in that EOS kind of model? So break down for us your perspective on chief of staff, the way that you describe it and the way that you serve your clients and your entrepreneurs, difference between that, VA, operations manager, COO? Man, that's a great and loaded question. So if you look at the White House, there's no COO, right? There's a chief of staff. So that's why the term is often confused. But I recently heard someone describe this as The COO is the operator of the business as it exists today. The COS is the person who is operationalizing the vision for the leader. So their scope is more narrow. They're focused on how do I help David Newman think through the next thing that's coming? Because that's the visionary's role, right? To think about How are we going to see the next thing that's coming around the corner? I think that's the main differentiator. Now, virtual assistant, invaluable. As a matter of fact, most of our clients have an assistant in some capacity because those are personal needs like calendar, email, specific tactics that I need done. That's usually where the assistant role starts and stops. When you start asking that person to be a strategic partner, that takes a different level of a person. Yeah. And that person probably shouldn't be and is too expensive to be doing your email for you or your right. calendar. Right? right. So that's a big differentiator between those three groups. I, you know, I would think about it as personal assistance is take care of the tactical things at a level. And I'm going to determine everything that I want done in the way I want it done. The COO is going to focus on the organization and what are we delivering at what margin, how what quality. You know, that's going to be the COO's job. The COS 
is to align with the executive to make that executive the very best they can possibly be. So it's part coach, part process leader, part personal project manager. And so that's that's the big difference. Now, in an SMB, what we find is most companies don't really have a COO. And oftentimes, if they do have a COO, we are the proxy to the COO. So even to help them, it's really a concentration of effort. If you just think about any company that's between, you know, 15 people to 250 people, there's a thin spot in that executive leadership team. And having a great generalist who can slide into one area and lift that up for a period of time, establish processes, and then when you're ready, bring in the right hire to lead. That's really the value of proxy is our ability to be malleable in an SMB environment and understand how we can make change. So that could look like, you know, there's just something wrong with my culture and I haven't figured it out. Okay, well, what's your employee engagement strategy look like? What do you mean? You know, I don't have a head of HR who's putting that together for me. Okay, well, that's, you know, we have that expertise. We've been through that a hundred times. Or you say, the CEO says, I'm always the lead salesperson. I have been forever. I'm the top sales guy. I got to get out of this. Okay, what's your marketing marketing engine going to look like? Well, I don't have a head of marketing because I've been it. Okay, well, that's where proxy fills in. Or you say, I'm thinking about doing some M&A, and I've never done that before. Okay, well, we'll talk to you about how to make your attractiveness score better, how to make you ready for that process and put you in a power position for a liquidity event. So that's the idea is it's we're the best generalists in the room. And we feel like we built a structure around that where it's not just, hey, did I hire the right person? Because it's the hiring process for this, I would argue this should always be a third party role, which is a little confusing for some people. But I I just would argue that's always the way it should be. Well, let's dig into that because I think it's really interesting to look at. And and even before I go there, I love your distinction that you just said that the COO is running the machine of today and the COS is helping build the machine of tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, no, I I love that. I'll tell you one funny story, David. When we started this, when we first started, you know, I, I don't know about you, but a lot of the CEOs we work with have 100 good ideas. Well, excuse me, they have 100 ideas. And then some of them are really good. <laughs> and so I used to have a whiteboard and we just got to a point where the whiteboard, you couldn't erase it anymore. You know, it had been up there for so long. And so that's really, you know, the executives that are really good and they're challenger executives, right? These are people who are looking at the way it's been done and saying, I can do it better. Well, they have ideas. They have great ideas. How do you run those down without running your company into the business of constant change? That's really what we can help with. Absolutely. So help me understand kind of the business model, which again, I think is fascinating. Is this a recruiting firm that you're running? Is it a place? Is it a staffing firm where they keep working for you, but they're placed with a company? Can a company say, hey, Brian, I I love Fred. Fred has become so integral. I want to buy Fred from you. I, I want Fred to work for us instead of work for you. So what's the dynamic? What's the financial arrangement, the hiring arrangement, the training, all of those things? Tell us how that works. Yeah, I think it's interesting because the traditional model of chief of staff is, or that strategic support and strategic right hand, is usually everybody goes, oh, I just got to hire. I got to make that perfect hire. Well, here's what happens. You make a really, really good hire, and then you've got to move them into another position. Like you're going to end up moving them into a PL responsibility, or you're going to have them run a division, or you're going to have them do something different. So guess what that means to the executive? Start over. That's a really challenging model because you become the guinea pig for the next big hire. So our model is instead of making that a hire, we are 100% staffed with people that we have hired ourselves, we have trained, we have taught them, you know, what are things to look for at various business stages. And so we really probably look more like a consultancy 
with full-time staff. But the way we make that available is we are uh, basically, we call it a subscription model. You just pay a flat fee. And then what we do is apply an integrator who is your day-to-day contact. And that's the person who, you know, if I'm using, you know, Wickman's language from EOS, it is the integrator to the visionary. And so you get that person day to day. They're the ones that are driving your initiatives. They're paying attention to it from a disciplined project management perspective. And then we also apply a strategist. And the strategist is how we can actually clone the executive because, you know, there's no way you're going to go hire an integrator who can also be thinking strategically about like what is the happening in that industry segment. So that's really where the strategist and integrator come together. And then there's also collective value because when we bring in a new client, we literally come together as a company and evaluate industry segments, what's happening for that type of company. Has anybody seen this issue before? So we feed that integrator those solutions. And then we also have built many, many tools over the years that people can easily and quickly implement to be able to find efficiencies. So it's a little bit of a different model. And Brian, am I hearing you correctly that every proxy client gets two people on their team? Yeah. Yeah, that's really The problem with any kind of strategic support is you are on an island. And that is really challenging because you have all the information. You know everything. And you can say nothing. (laughs) You know, if you say the wrong thing, it puts that executive in a very difficult position. Yeah. So that's why we have found that having an integrator and that strategist model together is a really powerful combination because we can provide high level information and be a you know true peer to the CEO. But we can also bring the discipline of the day to day to keep things moving forward at the pace they want. And am I right that the integrator person and the strategist person, you put those two humans on the team and they both fulfill that role of chief of staff? Yeah, that's right. That's what becomes your proxy. Got it. Wow. Yeah. So fascinating. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's back up the truck. Beep, 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 beep. Listen, I have a brand new sales book out there. You got to get your hands on it. It is awesome. It is amazing. It is fantastic. It is useful, practical, actionable, and a ton of bonuses are waiting for you over at doitselling.com. Grab your copy right now and grab all the bonuses, goodies, companion tools, and downloads that go with the book. You'll love it. I guarantee it. The other thing I love about your business model, it's really challenging, but I love I love this aspect of it, is you're bringing buyers and sellers together in a marketplace that they ordinarily could not see each other. It would be very, very challenging to find the right people. And then these people, right, the chief of staff folks, they would have a really hard time finding the perfect fit client to work with. So you're kind of recruiting your staffing team on one end of the equation, and you're always building the marketing machine and talking to CEOs and small business owners, and you're putting those together. Is there one of those that's more challenging, finding the talent or finding the clients, or does it shift, or how does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the challenge is probably more on the marketing side to find CEOs who are comfortable saying, yeah, I want to bring in some support. Because you know how it is, right? I mean, like there's a a process of starting a company means you're pretty darn good at whatever you're doing. You got to have a little bit of ego to do that. And so, you know, the ability to say, hey, I need help is really, really hard for some individuals. In terms of the people who work at Proxy, that's not a challenge because we attract people who just genuinely want to help. You know, we always talk about the values that we're built on are about finding joy in other people's success. That's one of the key variables. And you can tell. You can tell immediately when you talk to somebody if that's really what they're made of and what they're built for. So, yeah, I think it's probably more on the finding the right fit with executives, you know, that understand and want the proxy model. The beauty of it is once we start with a client, we rarely lose the client because it's one of those things that a company goes through these growth stages and it is so different 
running a 25 person company versus a 50 person company versus a 150 person company. It is night and day. And so we've seen each of those stages. And so we can help, you know, kind of smooth the edges around each one of those growth stages. Tell me a little bit about the background of these chiefs of staff, both the integrators and the strategists. Are they former CEOs? Are they, you know, owners who've had an eight-figure exit and just don't want to play golf all day and they want to bring their experience and expertise and energy to a new endeavor, but also kind of have a life at the same time? Who are they? Where do they come from? The strategists are CEOs and, exe- you know, very, very well-heeled experts, you know, that have been at a CEO level. They've had exits. They've been successful in that regard. The integrators are typically people who have either served in the role of chief of staff or they have been like VP level and above in corporate, but have tried their hand at running their own business or they have done that for a while and they don't want to do that anymore because they realize that's not who they are. So we have found, like, you know, it, it ranges from one was a consultant at e y and she was, I mean, she, you just meet her one time and you go, oh my God, she's amazing. She left the, you know, the business world for a while, had a family, raised a family, and then came back and came back with vigor. <laughs> and so, you know, we talked to her about how have things change? What's the technology look like? How would you implement that? And so that's a perfect example. And then others might be, we have found, this is kind of funny because I spent a lot of time in the agency world. But we found people who ran large accounts, multiple accounts for the agencies are actually fantastic at this because they've always been used to the boardroom. They're used to sharing honest opinions and feedback in a tactful way. And they understand get done. (laughs) That's the key. Do they know how to get shit done? I love that. Now, there's something that has taken off like wildfire. I know that what Proxy does is very, very different. But again, from the listener's standpoint, they say, Brian, this all sounds great, but I just want a fractional CMO, right? Fractional fill in the blank. I want a fractional COO. I want a fractional VP of sales. Draw the distinction and some of the pros and cons, mostly cons, I'm sure, with this whole fractional everybody out there now. How is hiring a fractional CXO different and more profoundly important than hiring a proxy? The fractional model, and I did it for years, I actually believe in it quite a bit. The challenge is with a fractional model is it all comes down to one human being. It comes down to the same issue with hiring great talent. At a certain point, you hit capacity or you have to move that person to another role And so in the fractional model, I love David Newman. I start working with him. Well, David Newman is worth a ton of money and he's an amazing expert. And you go, yeah, but I mean, that quarter of you that I'm buying isn't quite enough. I need you to also get in and start running things. I need you hands on. You go, sure, sure. I'll do that at 50%. Oh, well, that's pretty expensive. And then you start doing that. And then, you know, so the model is that eventually your capacity, you either run out of capacity or I run out of money. In our model, that blend of an integrator and the strategist is something that can go on and be scalable for as long as you need it to be. And the price never changes. That's it. We are a flat fee and our challenge is you throw everything at us. You can think of executive. And then what you learn is that it's not our issue on how much we can get done. And it's not your issue, Mr. Executive or Mrs. Executive, in terms of what you can come up with. It's the management metabolism in your organization. They can only absorb so much. And so that's really, you know, the limiting factor is only what the organization is capable of. And I would say the longer we work with a company, the more we increase that management metabolism. And the beauty of it is the price doesn't change and you have consistency in what we offer. So that's where we think the better mousetrap is. When you start working with a proxy, your integrator you're working with might be really good at succession planning. 
And then once you do that succession plan, two years later, you might say, now it's all about my ELT, my executive leadership team. I really need to work on how I build them up and my functional expertise in each of those departments. Well, maybe that's a different integrator. So we can roll that in and the strategist becomes the constant. Or it could be vice versa. You start out and you're really needing a culture expert as a strategist. And then over time, you go, you know what? Technology's become my key. We roll in a different strategist. There's always continuity in our model. So you're not, and again, this is a huge gift to so many CEOs, but I'm going to say it in a way that sounds like it's not that. You're not stuck with the same person once your burning issue right now today has subsided, maybe a year from now, 18 months from now, whatever it is, you say, hey, folks, it may be time for a crew change. Your problem used to be that, you know, Fred came in, Fred knocked the cover off the ball. Now you need someone like Susan and we're going to swap out. Fred's going to go on another assignment, meet your new person, Susan. That's exactly right. And we have a process for doing that that is so seamless. We literally just did that with a client. They had gone through a succession from father to son. They tried to do it with fractional experts yes. who were kind of in the business, but not really in the business. Right. They did that for three years, banging their heads against a wall. And in six months, we made a successful transition between the father. He put the son in that role. The son took on the job and did an incredible job. And we really just instructed like, or helped them frame up what does their board structure look like? That was the next level for them, right? The CEO, the father, had to become the chairman of the board. And what does that relationship look like? And what's the formality with that? And so anyway, we went through that process. Well, once we did that, the next phase was really working with that ELT. And so, you know, we brought in uh, someone who was really better with metrics and communication among those one-on-one teams. And so it's, it's really just a nice rotation where you can still feel that same level of trust, yeah. regardless of who the person is. Yeah, really, really amazing. I know you mentioned that your target market roughly is 15 employees to 250. Any specific industry or vertical niche that you really like to splash around in or that where people mostly come to you from? We would say probably professional services, but leadership, great leadership is great leadership. So that's really what we focus on is how do we enable those CEOs or executives on their team to be great leaders and not just in theory and philosophy, but by executing. Yeah. And doing the work so other people look at them and go, man, how is that person so on top of it? That's the main thing. But professional services, we have a ton around IT consulting, agencies. We have a ton of experience in the agency work, e-commerce companies. So it really can range all over the board. The bottom line is there just needs to be some sort of a digital connection in the company. And yeah. so if you're not a digitally oriented company, you're in trouble anyway. It sounds like typically it's not going to be law firm, accounting firm. We have a law firm. We have an accounting firm, just like that. Those are both great examples where if it was a single pro-serve individual, no, that's not right. Once you get to a point where you have a team in leadership, then that's when proxy is a perfect thing to bring in. Yeah. So a law firm is a perfect example. We have, you know, there's uh, four partners in that organization And there's one who drives everything. He's the CEO. And, you know, he just started to realize, like, I am not doing this to the best of my capacity. And so we have worked with that company for years and years. It's really just about leadership. Yes, I know. Terrific episode here. But have you seen our latest web training? Oh, my goodness. Pop over there right now or as soon as you're done listening to this episode, it's doitmarketing.com slash webinar. See you over there. Back to the good stuff. I want to dig into the packages here in a moment, but I am curious Like with the law firm, the accounting firm, the professional services community, how do you find them? How do they find you? You mentioned at the top of our conversation that marketing is kind of the sales function. 
because some people don't like using the S word, so they use the M word instead. But I know that you're very conversant in both. Tell me about your lead generation. What does prospecting or pipeline filling look like? I love sales. Sales are simply uh, me helping somebody make a decision that they couldn't have made had I not intervened. That's it. So I'm just going to introduce information. If it's the right information, fantastic. If it's not, we move on and we become friends and I help you in another way. The way we typically find our clients is we're very blessed with a lot of referrals that come from our clients that we work with. And of course, you know, that's a centerpiece of what we do. But in terms of lead generation, we spend quite a bit of time trying to put together really valuable content and really valuable tools that people can use. And then we do a lot in association and partnerships, channel strategies. So like we will get involved in an executive group and just be a good resource, just trying to help. And so the more we do that, the more people come to us and say, hey, I saw your piece on business operating systems. And I really didn't understand what a management methodology was. Could you tell me more about that? And that becomes one of the pieces. Or I saw your video on how you develop a leader's list, you know, and and all the things that I can't quite get to that I want to. Tell me how you manage and prioritize that list. And so it's usually a point solution like that that people see. And when you say these communities, this is like... YPO or yep. strategic coach. EO, Collective 54, Vistage, yeah, any of those groups. So you're and you're members of all of those. Either members or we work with people in them and they know us and they refer us back. Nice. That's really great. I love the productized services. I mean, as far as your business, you know, we use the value builder as one of the tools. And so yep. this whole productized service subscription model. I love that so much. Tell us about the four levels. And again, if I don't have these right, I'm just looking off what's in front of me here. There's behind the scenes, there's side by side, there's on your behalf, and there's place and replace. Tell us about some of the differences between those four levels of productized chief of staff services. Yeah, after coming out of the agency world, I was so used to, you know, FTE models or pay by hour. And the problem with that is it just ended up constantly being an argument back and forth. Did I get the hour? What did you do with that hour? And so our perspective on this is just tell us everything that is on your mind. Just get it off your chest and tell us what's going on. Our ability to execute is typically governed by our client. So we just feel like we have a better model because. If you're the executive and we're working side by side with you, that literally means whenever we're in a meeting, you are there with us. So it's still your time that governs how much we can impact the situation. On your behalf is literally what it sounds like. You know us, you trust us, you know we could go off on our own, do the meeting without you, and you know that we're going to come back with the right solution and we're going to ask the questions you would have asked. The place and replace is really our commitment to our own team and to you because the thing that we really sell, David, is trust. You know, you have to believe that our business model is 100% focused on you. And so place and replace is really a situation where if you start working with somebody on our team and you say, man, this person would be the perfect CMO, the perfect COO, the perfect, you know, whatever that CXO is, you can acquire that person and we can put another proxy right in their place. So there's continuity and you as the CEO can continue to keep thinking forward and innovating yeah. While that person, you know, can grow a division or grow a specific part of your business. Yeah. Wow. So, so smart. So as we are landing the plane here, you know, I'm going to give you a little moniker. If it's helpful, feel free to use it. You have truly mastered chief of staff as a service, right? We talk about software as a service. We feel like, oh, X as a service. This is chief of staff as a service. or the executive multiplier as a service. And it's just so smart and so fascinating. Brian, where can people go to learn more about you, connect with you, resources, tools? What shall we put in the show notes so that people can connect directly with you? 
Yeah, absolutely. The first place to go always is proxy.com. That's P R O X X Y two X's because that's you and us together. Nice. Uh, so proxy.com on proxy.com, there are tools and resources that you can find. Like one is how valuable is your time? And when you invest your time, what are you really getting back? And so we have an ROI generator that you can quickly, quickly run through and start to understand, you know, what the return on your time could be. And then the other place to go is a section called Our Thoughts. There's white papers in there. There's uh, solution offerings. There's SOPs. There's uh, great content. So that's the kind of thing, like if you're interested in, I know two to three years from now, I want to sell my company and I want to be prepared for that. So I'm in a power position. There's great stuff in there about, you know, the attractiveness and readiness process and what we do to help you get ready for that. And then in terms of connecting with me, you can always find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active. And I I mean what I say, I'm always interested in the first conversation to see if I can help. So if there's anything we can do, we will uh, be happy to help. And if we're not the right answer, we'll help you find the right answer. Excellent. And all of those links to connect with Brian and with Proxy will be in the show notes directly under this episode at thesellingshow.com. Brian, you are such a rock star. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing your brilliance with us. It's my pleasure. And everybody that comes to this already knows that your books are amazing as well. And so I would highly recommend everybody go pick those up uh, because it's really usable information. It's not just theory. You can execute it. So that's the type of thing that, you know, at Proxy, that's what we want to use too. We bring those kind of tools. I love it. Thank you for those kind words. And again, thank you for being on with us. You are amazing. We'll talk again soon. And that wraps up another episode of The Selling Show. Hey, tell you what, if you like us, rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, tell a friend, go grab the notes and downloads and extras at thesellingshow.com. See you next time.